In this video, we're going to have a look at these new layouts that are available for the matrix visuals in Power BI. We're going to look at these different layouts and what they're for. I also want to show you how you can create simple reports like cash flows or PL reports. All of that and more. So, without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So as part of Power BI's May 2024 feature updates, the Power BI team has added some new layouts that you can utilize within the matrix visuals. So the idea with this change is to mimic the experience that you have when creating pivot tables in Excel. This makes creating matrix or laying out your matrix in Power BI more familiar for those Excel users. So let's have a look at some of those options in action. So here we are in my reports that I created for today. It's a very simple report for the Northwind uh, database, which is a fictional company that sells goods internationally. So I have cr created or created a small subset of this information, but it's essentially a list of different grocery products and listing out when they've been ordered. So the products have some information like their name and the order details have, you know, things like, you know, how much, how much are they, were they sold for, how many, and these products have different categories and we have them connected to a calendar table so that we can show them on a kind of in a time intelligence kind of calendar format and the last thing is i created a measure here for sales which simply just calculates the total sales amount by multiplying unit price and quantity so in my local machine here i have installed the may version of power bi desktop so let's go through this experience of creating a matrix uh, visual together. So what I want to do is I want to show category name to the category of the products themselves. And then I want to show the products themselves. And then I want to show which years they belong to. So we're going to bring in the year from the calendar table and then the total sales for those products for those years. And now it's using the table by default. We're going to choose matrix here and we're just going to adjust these. So move the product name to the row, move column to the year. And now we have a very simple matrix visual, which is the default visual that you typically have. So you have a list of your different categories uh, of the different products and how much in total were sold for each of those years. You have your column and row totals. And you can also have the individual products and the category totals by expanding one level here, which, as you can see, shows us a different view here. So it gives us the same breakdown, uh, except it's showing us the individual products within those categories. So what you'll notice with this layout is that it's using the indentation version by default. And that's because if we go to the format and layout and style presets, it's using the compact layout here, which are the new updates that the team, uh, the Power BI team has added. So this compact layout basically gives you a good kind of sized matrix visual that doesn't take up too much space in the report page itself. And uh, it allows you to see the breakdown of your different categories indented. So so if you work with matrix visuals before this update, you remember that you have the option to turn on or off the stepped indentation uh, option, which is now completely removed. So you can just uh, use the layout options here to either choose if it's uh, indented, which will be compact or outline and tabular, which is the uh, stepped version. So with this new compact layout, you have the option to adjust the indentation for your subcategories within the row uh, field wells here. And this is global. So that means if you have more rows or more steps in your kind of categories, 
these indentation will be applied across all of those. Let's move on now to the next layout option, which is the outline, which you will notice is a little bit different from the compact. The first change that you'll notice that is fairly obvious is that it's removed the indentation from those uh, categories that you have. So instead of indentation, they are now put in a separate column altogether so that you can kind of see them in kind of this view. So the outlines by default are showing the totals at the top, both on the category level and on the grand total. It shows at the top here, but you can actually adjust it here in your settings options and the format pane on the right hand side. So if you go to row subtotals, you'll see here in the position instead of those subtotals to be at the top, if you adjust it to the bottom, it's, I would say, it's a lot more logical to be at the bottom. So it gives you the kind of total for each of those categories and the overall total here at the bottom. So this view is actually reminiscent to how the matrix visuals were presented in the early days of Power BI. So I assume that a lot of the Power BI users will be familiar with this format. If we go back to the layout and style presets here, you lose the ability to indent because that's just for the compact layout option, but you do have the options to repeat row headers instead. So what it gives you is a more tabular view of you know how the matrix looks like uh, without that kind of big blank areas that you had uh, before. So you can toggle this on or off here in this option, which you can also do in the tabular layout view. So if we turn that off and we go to the next layout option, tabular, you'll notice that it's not really that much different from the outline. The only difference that you will notice is that uh, in tabular, you lose that extra line of blank row on the category section. So uh, as you can see, if I go to tabular, you will lose that, uh, that blank row in that category name. So it makes it a little bit more compact in a sense, but I think it just makes the kind of matrix a little bit busier. So with having that blank row gives that clear separation between these different uh, levels, which is a lot more obvious if you have the outline like this. Speaking of blank rows, they've also added the ability to add blank rows in between your different kind of row layers. So in the format pane on the right hand side here, you can see this new blank rows option, which if we enable, you will notice it will add a new level or a new blank row here just before the new kind of category. So uh, it just gives that spacing or additional white space for you to distinguish the different kind of rows that you have in your matrix. Now the blank rows, you can leave it like this or you can adjust it to make it more prominent. So maybe you want to add borders in between your different categories, maybe change uh, how, like how that is kind of bordered, what the color of that uh, blank row is, so you have a bit more control uh, to make it more prominent. Now that you've seen how the kind of matrix visual works with all of these new style presets, let's have a look at how you can create a simple cash flow uh, matrix report using all of these settings. Now we're going to go and create a very simple one, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to link a different uh, YouTube uh, guide, Power BI Park, which goes through a kind of more complex solution of how you can create a PNL and cash flow report. But what we're going to do is just show you how you can use these uh, layouts uh, in the more simplistic sense. So here we are in this report that I've created. Very simple. I've created just one query here, which is a list of kind of different revenues and costs uh, with different subcategories across multiple years. And let's say I just want to show it in a matrix visual to give us a total of all of these different expenses and profits in a kind of simple cash flow report. So we're going to go to this um, report view here. We're going to bring all of these values into a matrix. I'm just going to select all of them, change it to a matrix. 
I'm going to just adjust them, make sure that they're in the right place. And I have, yep, the sum of amount. We'll go to the formats pane here. We'll remove a few things. So just remove the column subtotal. Leave the subtotal, the row subtotal at the bottom here. And we're going to expand it to one level. We're going to change the layout of it. Or we'll change the style to none just to make it a little bit simpler. We're going to change the layout for it to be outline just so that we can show the overall total uh, for each of these kind of category groups. We're going to sort it like this to start with the revenue. We'll adjust the totals to be at the bottom like this. And we are also going to adjust subtotals here just to rename them. So the subtotals, we're going to enable per row level here. And we're going to go to the subcategory and name this one subtotal. As you can see, it's, it can be a different label to the grand total. And then we're just going to go to the category here and just, just change this to uh, net profit. And that's really it. So as you can see, with a few kind of formatting options, we were able to create kind of a PNL or a cash flow matrix visual in Power BI that is a lot more familiar with some of our finance folks out there. So it's a lot more familiar in terms of layouts and with a few more kind of updates and tweaks can be a lot more useful. So for example, you might want to add some calculations like what are the variance between the two different years and show them like, let's say in a bar or maybe a variance chart, which uh, I've already covered in a separate video using an SVG uh, solution by Andre. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link it somewhere in the description box below or somewhere in this video. So you can go check it out and try to apply it for yourself if you want to use it. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so I have to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you liked the video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.